so background is eight counts per second we're now looking at 380 could you walk over towards me please here comes the patient 400 counts per second five seven eight nine thirteen eighteen twenty five hundred thirty six hundred five thousand overlaid this thing can't even detect him <laughs> that is distance inverse square and he walks away and in a few seconds it drops down again technetium 99 m is a metastable or very shortly stable version of technetium 99 it's kind of excited and it needs to de-excite which it does rapidly it takes about six hours for it to lose about half of its radioactivity six hours later it's lost the next half and so on until it eventually approaches zero activity somewhere around forty hours later it's given to patients like my father-in-law here because it gets in your blood and goes through your veins and it emanates gamma rays as it slowly decays they emanate from inside of you going out it's almost like an inverse x-ray and various machines like a gamma camera can look and see the emanations as they come out of your body. Imagine putting something in the pipes of your house that glowed, that, that, that had, had such a glow that was so bright that you could see it through the walls. You'd be able to see clogs and stuff. That's kind of how this works. These gamma rays are about 140,000 electron volts apiece. They're shooting out of this man in every direction. Look at the readings I'm getting. Over 5,000 counts per second. 50 microsieverts per hour on contact, it overloads my unit, and sorry about the focus. And yet this is still a very common procedure, not particularly dangerous, although I'm being really annoying with my probes right this moment, as you can definitely see. Don't mind me. I know this is probably the most invasive thing anybody could ever do to you, but, you know, no. whatever. Well, actually, a colonoscopy is probably a little more invasive, but... <laughs> So, we are in the one ti uh, times 1,000 mode right here, and we are at 240,000 counts per minute. Move this back a little bit. As we approach the unnamed individual, we go up to 300, 400, 500, and we are off the scale at just this distance. If we touch the individual, oops, we drop the probe on the ground. If we touch the individual, it becomes a solid sound that's probably deathly annoying. Let me cut the sound off. How far back can we get before it goes away? Let's see. We are back 20 feet at least. Probably 30 feet. And it's starting to go down now. At least 30 plus feet, maybe long, maybe more before it drops down to normal. Start walking and it starts going right back up in just a second takes oh it's in slow response mode that's why turn it in fast response mode there we go and it goes right back up again really 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 fast okay here's a CRM 100 oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oops that's a Miller Rankins per hour switch to counts per minute and we're looking at 5,000 counts per minute so put this right up in his face the nice person who is doing this is not getting too angry yet. Although he's over 11,000, 12,000, 13,000 counts per minute. 15. 14. So I let my Polymaster 1703 GMB, which is a neutron and gamma detector, have a go at it. As you can see, we're at 3,300 counts per second of, of gamma rays, but we're at 2, 3, and almost 4 counts per second of neutrons. We shouldn't be getting any neutrons off of Technetium-99. So the question is, are these false detections? A lot of people have suggested that they might be. Well, going to the neutron count screen, you'll notice the neutron count isn't going up even though time is. I'm, I jumped around the time a little bit here. Um, you'll see I do that in a minute. Um, the purpose of this is to show you, though, that this, the actual counting function here works perfectly fine. What's happening is the quick reporting screen is showing you a fast readout, which is not apparently cleaning out the false readings. But I, Sorry, I just jumped ahead in the time there. But you see that this screen is actually showing you the false readouts, or rather hiding the false readouts from you. So you're getting a clean, real picture. So apparently it sort of does and sort of doesn't show false readings. It depends on what mode you're in. This right there is the uh, correct mode to be in. Now going into gamma spectroscopy mode here, let's take a gamma spectrum. We should see 140 
1,000 electron volts, 140 keV should be what we see. Now we're not going to get quite that. We'll get around 110, 120 keV. The polymaster has always been a little off in technetium 99, but not by much. And calibration could easily fix that. You see we're at like 115. This could be even be, quite frankly, just a simple act of the fact that I may not be thermally calibrated yet. But that is a beautiful, quick spectrum to take, and very, very quick to figure out what's actually causing the radioactivity. I don't have to guess with a Geiger counter. I can actually instantaneously find out. And I can identify it. Now, I didn't give it very long. If I'd given it longer, it would have come out better. You see, it says TC, uh, was it TC99. Um, it thinks that's pretty accurate. Background, and of course, Cobalt 57 is not Cobalt 57. If I'd given it a little bit more time, it wouldn't have done that, but you know. The maximum dose.